Um, so where we, where we might expect to see 20 more meters, um, this, this does achieve uh, the separation and interface distances that we would normally expect to, um, to see achieved um, on, on a site of this, of this nature. Okay, we'll be offered... Sorry, 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 Phil. One more thing. Um, this, this is related to one of the audience members that were the council said on here. It's just in Brighton, I just want to make it clear that one of the council is calling the committee. I'm sorry, you didn't correct it. I didn't say that. I didn't actually make that. No, I didn't hear you say that. I just didn't switch the mic on. Okay, um, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. Do we have a move for this, please? Denise, and do we have a second one? Um, thank you. All those in favour? Against? Okay, that's carried. Thank you. We now go to agenda item 8, which is pages 39 to 46. Matthew, can have a presentation? Set out in our guidance. Um, however, 
we've had a count of the fact that all the windows at the first floor at number one are non-habitable rooms. There are no, there are no windows at the, in the first floor elevation of the extension. The window here at number one is a obscurely glazed bathroom, and the other window is a um, is a landing. Um, at ground floor, um, there are windows that serve a kitchen and stroke diner, uh, but these are already substantially obscured because of a, um, a, a boundary wall and fence um, that, that runs along the perimeter of the site. Um, in addition to that, all the, all the windows along the front elevation of the proposed conversion and the extension will also be obscurely glazed um, and fixed non opening. Um, so we've considered those as blank elevations. Um, okay, so the outlook from these windows, as I said, is already significantly reduced due to the location of a 1.8 metre high fence and boundary wall. Um, windows at first floor level on the converted building and the extension, as I said, are all obscurely glazed and non opening, with additional deluxe roof lights to be installed in the sloping roof plane. The principal outlook from this building, so this building here, um, will look to the rear overlooking the vacant paddock and fields beyond. Although the extension is substantial in terms of its scale and massing, its design and use of materials will be in keeping with the character of the existing building and conditions proposed secure materials for approval. It is not considered that this development will have an adverse impact on the setting of Eastern Village Conservation Area and the conversion of these buildings into residential use will remove a non-conforming commercial use within a primary residential area. Um, this building here has until recently been used as a commercial, uh, it, it's been in commercial use, uh, so removing that commercial use and, and replacing it with a residential use is considered to be more appropriate. The proposals are not considered to affect the openness of the green belt and are considered to be in keeping with policies in the unitary development plan and the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework. As such, the application is recommended for approval. Uh, there's no petition with this, with this application and a single objection has been, has been received. The application is presented to members due to its removal from delegation at the request of Councillor Mitchell and Councillor Gilchrist also objects to the proposal. Okay, do we have a Lord Councillor that would like to speak to this? Yes. If you could just state the name, please, for the record. Councillor Dave Mitchell, Eastern Ward Councillor for the last 32 years. Lovely I'd like to point out that, uh, yeah, I'm not for election, like a lot of people. Uh, I would like to point out that um, quite a few things that have been stated in the, in the officer's report uh, are correct, factually correct. There's one or two omissions that didn't take place. Uh, I spoke to the, the Secretary of the uh, Eastern Village Preservation Society on Tuesday evening at the lovely event and I asked why he didn't appear at the, um, the site visit. Uh, and on that I would like to thank all members who attended the site visit. I think it was beneficial to get a layout of what the village looks like and how it, how it, how it is. Uh, yeah, so I spoke to the Secretary of the Preservation Society and uh, made a comment that uh, I was surprised it wasn't there on the morning. He said, well, the application's been withdrawn. I said, no, it hasn't been withdrawn, it's going forward. Well, they've removed that second building out of the application. I said, no, they haven't. And that's the reason why I asked for the site visit, because I wanted members to see. And you have to take into account that the, uh, the buildings that you're looking at, the first foundation the laid in the 1600s, so I'm talking about history. Yeah. Pity uh, our heritage champion is here to actually support, support me on this, but uh, we've got real history in Eastern Bones, it's recorded in the Dimsay Booth. This is the epicentre of the heritage, heritage part of the village. And it uh, really concerns me that officers come along and say, it's a building, the scale when you look at the drawing, it, gives a, it doesn't give a true uh, reflection of what the, uh, the second building is, the barn, the original barn, because it's actually an oblong shape. It doesn't have those uh, added pieces on it at the moment over there. The print. Two things. The print. Two things that really come to mind with me is 
And um, senior officer did say in his presentation that there's a substantial <coughs> expansion to part two. And if you actually look at the demand of the proposal compared to what was originally there, if you look at the top left hand corner of that particular diagram, the actual building as it stands at the moment is the light part, not the dark part, just the light part. That's the barn. So you can see how huge the extension is that they're opposing, but in the middle of the conservation area. Totally against <coughs> what I believe to be um, the reuse of buildings in a green belt, and that falls in line with the um, policy CH2. I, I am really concerned with that. Also, the development spec in the conservation area, and that is our council's on conservation area, and that's CH10 in Eastern Village. It really is a, a very large extension. I have no problem at all with the other building being converted into two flats. It would, uh, sorry, two houses. Does it would actually complement the cottages? There are also cottages on the opposite side of the road. But this particular development really is uh, an abhorrent to myself personally. But not only that, it also goes against not only those guidelines that have already stated. But it's also the distances uh, in relation to the neighbours. If you look at one, and Matthew did say, the uh, principal planning officer did say, well, you know, Vicarage Road number one's had an extension and the uh, conservatory well, put on the end. But the actual piece that we're talking about is the original house. One, that's where the distance affects. It's not the extension or, or the conservatory, it's the original property. That's where the distance is really come into match. If we're looking to conserve our, our heritage, and I've mentioned that the heritage is so great, and as I said, I'm sorry the heritage champion didn't stay for this one. He was quite happy to support Birkenhead. But then again, Eastern right on the periphery of the world, isn't it? We have a tendency, to, people have a tendency to think that. I would love members to take notice of all the points that I'd like to put forward and actually refuse this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. Uh, can I have the subject committee, please? Yeah, I think the uh, site visit was, uh, was useful to see the, uh, the layers of the existing building. Um, I think that, uh, Professor, it is, a, it is only one to two applications, even though it's, it's uh, it brought to us as one, and it's a shame really that that's, that's the case, because then the proposal for the, um, the first building, uh, if you like, the, uh, the old cafe. Uh, I think that is very sympathetic and as Matthew pointed out, it removes that ugly uh, staircase uh, to the side. So it would actually be quite beneficial um, that would take the arm to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the development. Um, however, the, I was going to ask for that drawing and then uh, uh, Dave's asked and then we can, uh, so we can see it up uh, because we can't see uh, the white of the right with the original building and the rest of the extension. Now, if we're, if we're looking, you know, as David asked us for, for reasons potentially to refuse it, then clearly there's policy context and policy implications. And the two that are, are, are referred to in the report, of course, are the location of the building within the Eastern Conservation Area, uh, the location of the building within the Green Belt, um, and all our um, policies on separation distances, which we've discussed, I think, on virtually every item. Uh, on the agenda tonight. So the first question arising out of you know the tests that we apply to ourselves for developments in the green belt, for developments in sensitive conservation areas, is is this a suitable development for a green belt? Is it a suitable development for a uh, conservation area? Do the extensions, as we're looking at them, particularly with the top drawing, uh, enhance the character? of a building in the conservation area and in the green belt. And I'm proud to say that, certainly in my view, having been to say visits, looking at the plans, is that it doesn't. It well, swamps the existing uh, building. Um, it looks to me, without know, measuring floor areas, as though it's doubling, at least doubling, probably more, the footprint of the building and the old, the old sandstone building is completely lost uh, within the extent of the um, of, of those extensions, um, yeah, fairly fairly substantial has been been um, 
in the way that it's been described by others, I'd say was overly uh, substantial. Uh, the second issue clearly is the separation distances, and whilst from time to time uh, we might allow separation distances to go, um, it's never really been on the basis that it's a full metre away, um, or full uh, metre uh, nearer. A couple of centimetres here and there might not matter, but a full metre, particularly when we're looking at policies that affect green belts, that affect conservation areas, it's at that point that our policies really ought to uh, stand for something. Um, so yeah, I mean that's my view. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen these plans. I've got an issue with the scale of mass of the building. I've got an issue with uh, policies uh, not being fully uh, adhered to, particularly given its location in the green belt and in the conservation area. I'm happy to listen to other terms of, of the debate. I do have some thoughts on on where the full refusal to concentrate on those particular policy areas, green belt and conservation areas. So. Perhaps other members will pick it up a little bit more and um, I can put forward where it's to, but it's basically along the lines of the matting and the policy. Thanks, Stuart. Um, I'd like to um, ask you to just come back regarding the separation distance if you mind. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Um, so, this property here is number one, um, and this element of the proposal is the original sandstone building. As you move further away from the building, all of these buildings at this point meet the separation distances. And contrary to what Councillor Mitchell said, it is actually the extension and the bathroom window, which is obscurely glazed um, at first floor level, which falls a metre short of the, um, of the separation distances. Um, it's at 13 metres, but as I said in my presentation, all of the windows along this elevation, so here, they are either obscurely glazed and fixed, or serve non habitable rooms. Okay, why do you... I'm sort of familiar with the recent discussions about green belt and how we treat green belt. I'm less sure about how we deal with conservation areas and potential impacts upon them. So it would be helpful to me if you could just unpack that a little bit, how you decide what's acceptable or not in a conservation area. Uh, thank you to you, Chair. Uh, each of our conservation areas is subject to a character uh, appraisal and a, a management plan. Um, these proposals were actually subject to detailed pre-application discussions, and as part of those discussions, they've been worked up with our senior conservation officer, who's had quite a lot of significant input into, um, into this scheme, particularly um, the uh, the works that are going to be carried out to the, uh, the original sandstone building and their extension uh, and its extension. So having regard to um, what's contained in the character appraisal and the management plan and the advice um, that was given by our senior conservation officer, these, proposal, these proposals very closely follow uh, that advice given at pre-app stage and the view was that um, in fact um, the, these proposals enhance the, the character of the, the conservation area and indeed preserve it because they ultimately remove a, a commercial use in a primary residential area as well. It was an art gallery. Um, did you want to come back on that one, Denise? Since a residential use as well is going to be really nice development for the area and it will enhance the area. And I would, I mean, if someone else is going to go against what I would propose, we will now, Chair. Thank you. Did, did anybody else uh, want to speak on this before we move to? Stuart did indicate, sorry, because Mr. Sainsbury just moved it, but Stuart well, indicated that you would be happy to. Yes. Yeah. I said I would propose approval now. Okay, I've had advice from the solicitor and it has been moved. Seconded. So, um, thank you, Chris, for the second on that. Um, all those. 
as we now have a substantive, as we now have a substantive motion on the table, and the question has been, a question has been raised about whether it enhances the conservation area or not. When we're on the site visit, it's very clear that you can see the bar from the street scene. And we have in the past, despite the advice of the conservation officer, because these things are very subjective and uh, very often a matter of opinion. So despite the advice, for example, the last committee, I think Melwood was, uh, was under the uh, uh, under discussion, was it, number four, where you know, we took a completely different view, having seen the extent of the, um, uh, of, of the, um, uh, the extension. I just take the view that we do have a series of policies on conservation areas and on green belts that set down policies, not least for the separation of distance, and exactly what Matthew said. And we shouldn't really leave. I really don't want to stifle your debate. Right. <laughs> 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 so, we have had a move around the uh, second round um, so I need to get to the vote, okay. Uh, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. I've had a move for a second. Are all those in favour? And those against? Okay, that's carried. Agenda item 9 is subject to a site visit, so we go to agenda item 10, which is pages 57 to 16. Matthew, you can have a presentation, please. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Chair. Permission is sought for the change of use from a public house to a hotel with restaurant and bar. The site is located within the traditional suburban centre with a number of mixed uses located along Victoria Road. Policy TL7 allows proposals providing overnight accommodation, including the provision of restaurants and other facilities available to the visiting public within urban commercial locations. The existing use of the building is a public house. No existing external uh, alterations are proposed with the exception of an access ramp to the side of the building to allow for disabled access. The site is located within a sustainable and accessible area with amenities close by and good links to public transport. It is likely that the proposal would give rise to a small increase in demand for our street parking but given the proximity of public transport links and public car parks, if I could just show them, there's a car park there and a car park here, so immediately adjacent or just across the road from the site, um, it is considered that there is sufficient capacity within the vicinity. The scale and nature of the facilities in terms of numbers and turnover of visitors, levels of activity and any noise levels likely to be generated are considered to be in keeping with the site's location in the traditional suburban centre and also the wider pro promotion of tourism in this part of the borough. Regard has also been had um, to the fact that the, uh, the existing use is a public house and it's likely that um, the removal of the public house and the use of this building as a hotel um, will be an improvement in terms of, of any uh, noise and disturbance issues. The proposals are therefore considered to be acceptable. There's no petition of objection. This application is before the committee as the applicant is an agent, as the applicant's agent is SDA, and there have been two objections. One additional letter has been received in support of the proposal. Is there one council that would like to speak to this? Well, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I will counsel, I'm the new Brighton councillor, just to, to uh, make that really clear. Um, uh, and I would just like to. <laughs> I think you can probably hear me anyway. Um, I would just like to say that I am in favour of this uh, proposal. I think it's um, in keeping with the, um, with the area in terms of its usage. Uh, Victoria Road is a, a mix of, of businesses, um, cafes, hotels, uh, cafes, bars. Um, Etc. Um, and I, I think that um, it's a very sympathetic um, uh, renovation. Um, so I'd just like to say I'm in favour of that. Thanks. Um, just for clarification, you're speaking as um, a committee member there, yes. not as a ward councillor. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. Is there any, anybody else in the committee who would like to speak? No? Move approval, Chair. Okay, could we have a mover for that, please? Thank you. David, a seconder. Thank you. Paul? Okay, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed as an additional condition for on the late list. Better a mover and a seconder, all those in favour? That's unanimous, that's carried, thank you. Agenda item 11 is subject to a site visit, so it's agenda item 12, which is pages 67 to 70. Matthew, can have a presentation, please. Thank you to you, Chair. Permission is sought for the raising of the existing roof by 0.8 metres, that's 80 centimetres, and the insertion of a dormer window to the rear. A single storey extension on the rear elevation is also proposed. The proposals have been amended from those originally applied for, with the result that a new gable window and roof terrace uh, above the garage originally proposed have now been deleted from the scheme. The scale of raising the roof has also been brought back so that the increase would only be 80 centimetres. It is considered that raising the roof by 80 centimetres would have no greater impact on the street scene or any significantly greater impact on the amenities of neighbouring properties. The proposed windows in the front facing roof slope are permitted development and do not require permission as they do not result in additional volume or floor space and there is no external platform. The proposals are considered to comply with the requirements of policy HS11 and supplementary planning guidance note 11 on house extensions and are recommended for approval as a qualifying condition. Is the petitioner present? Is there a petitioner present? No? Okay, is there a wall council present? Okay, can I open this up to committee for debate, please? Okay. The officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions listed. Can I have a mover, please? Denise, Senator David, all those in favour? That's unanimous, that's carried, thank you. Agenda items 13 and 14 are subject to a site visit, so we'll to agenda item 15, which is pages 81 to 92. Matthew, can have a presentation, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This application seeks the approval of the reserve matters details for the erection of a building in manufacturing use following the Grant of Outline Planning Commission in March 2012. All conditions attached to the Outline Commission are still relevant and subject to formal discharge. The size and scale of the building proposed is in keeping with the parameters of the Outline approval. The development will have a positive impact on local employment, supporting the principles of sustainable economic development, supporting long-term economic growth in the area through employment opportunities and economic viability. The site sits within the Docks Estate, adjacent to the primary industrial area, therefore the B2 use proposed by this development is acceptable. The design, scale and appearance of the new building follows the design guidance approved at outline stage, with the proposed offices and entrance being defined as a place of work, and the larger scale B2 uses forming a backdrop behind. The use of appropriate materials, including cladding with a, with a range of textures, will provide depth and interest to the elevations. Landscaping proposals will create some additional interest, uh, greening the site and complementing the new planted avenue of trees along Wallasey Bridge Road. A water feature with capacity for sustainable urban drainage system will, further, uh, uh, will add further landscape interest to the site. Both vehicle and pedestrian access to the site is considered to be acceptable, with new access arrangements and on-site park and cycle parking parking being provided. The site has been screened for environmental impact assessment and the proposals do not deviate from the original environmental assessment. The habitat regulation screening has been updated and revisited, taking into account mitigation measures outlined in the funding application it's concluded that either alone or in combination with other projects, these proposals will not have a significantly would not have a significant effect on protected sites, and no further assessment under the habitat regulations is required.
before the Council grants permission for these proposals. The proposed development will have a positive impact in terms of economic regeneration, and the environmental regeneration of this part of the Docks estate will, will positively contribute to the wider regeneration of the borough. Um, there have been no representations on this application, and the proposals are recommended for approval. We don't have a board council here, do we know? Can I open this up to the committee, please? Move approval. Okay, could we, could we have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Chris. Second one. Thank you, Phil. Okay, the officer's recommendation is to approve based on the amended application and subject to the conditions listed and the statement from Merseyside Environmental Advisory Services on the late list. I've had a move and a seconder. All those in favour? That's unanimous. That's carried. Thank you. Okay, so we're moving to agenda item 17, uh, pages 117 to 120. Can I see the presentation, please? Thank you. Thank you, through you, Chair. This report advises members that a metal cabinet has been installed in front of 27 Rosemount in Oxford without permission. The cabinet is small in scale. Is small in scale and is not considered to have a detrimental impact on the street scene or the conservation area. It measures one meter in height, is one meter wide, and 30 centimeters deep. There are no objections to the proposal on highway safety grounds. Its scale is such that it would not obstruct the use of the pavement. Government guidance says enforcement action should only be taken where it's expedient to do so and not simply to remedy the absence of a planning application. The cabinet results in no harm to either the street scene, highway or pedestrian safety, or the character of Oxford Conservation Area. It's therefore recommended that it's not expedient to take enforcement action in this instance. Thank you. Would anybody like to make any comments on this? What's the time? It's a new time. Is, isn't it? So. Are we happy to go with the uh, officer's recommendation for us to say that? <laughs> <laughs> All those in favour? Are you not in favour? Do you know what you're doing? Those against? Thank you.